Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. You know, when I was a young man, I was living in the Santa Cruz area, the Monterey Bay area, and, uh, and I was a surfer, and I was a junior in high school, and I had just gotten my driver's license, and life was just about to become amazing for me. I was going to get to go to the beach every day. I lived seven miles from the beach, so I was going to get to be able to go down and surf every day. And then my father said to us, uh, he, had, he had started working with a company called Success Motivation Institute in Waco, Texas. And he said, hey, they called me. They want me to come to Waco and, uh, and, work, uh, and work with SMI in Waco, Texas. And I had seen the great impact Success Motivation Institute had had in my father's life. He, was a, he had been a, a champion basketball coach. A state, his teams had won the state championship. And then he was a principal and then assistant superintendent of schools. And then he just left all that behind to become a member of this great organization, uh, Success Motivation Institute, SMI. And it had such a profound effect on him. So we were happy to go with him, our family, to move to Waco, Texas. But I have to say, when I left the ocean, I got a bottle of, several bottles of sand and water to bring with me. And I had dreams every night about surfing while I was in Waco, Texas. But the good news about Waco, Texas now is I just checked the surf report. I checked the buoy reports. There's a swell coming from Arizona on its way. It'll be arriving in Waco, Texas any minute. Uh, I heard it's going to be three to four foot faces perfect, uh, perfect uh, wave face, best surf they've had in Waco, Texas in a while, because Waco, Texas has a wave pool now. And I guess Bill Moyer, he is the CEO of SOSleadership.com, has a background with SMI, uh, Success, Mo Success Motivation Institute. But first, we got to get, what's the surf report in Waco, Texas right now? I know you've got a wave pool. Well, it, with that wave pool, 100 degrees here, so we need the wave pool coming in uh, <laughs> because we have no rain for two months. Oh, no kidding. No kidding. Uh, uh, every July and August, we have no rain, uh, but we've, we're a little bit ahead for the year, so the wave pool will feel great. Well, all I can tell you is, I, I mean, uh, the surfers that I know, they say it's a perfect wave, and I want to go there. I want to go tandem surfing, take my wife on my board and do lifts and, and ride that perfect wave one of these days. Hopefully soon. I'm hoping to come down there. Uh, someday soon. But, you know, you, you, your background is so interesting to me because you, uh, Paul Meyer, who started Success Motivation Institute, meant a lot to me in my life. I was just thinking about him the other day because when I graduated from high school there, he gave me a cross pen with my name engraved on it. And I remember the impact he had on my dad's life. And I listened to all of those dynamics of personal motivation series and the leadership stuff and the sales stuff and all of that and really helped me propel my young life. And he had this definition, Bill, that uh, success is the progressive realization of a worthwhile, predetermined, uh, uh, meaningful goal. Uh, progressive realization of, of a worthwhile, predetermined, I believe he said, meaningful goal. Uh, it's personal goal, yep. Yeah. Per personal goal. Personal well, goal, Well, my yes. dad talked about it. He said personal and meaningful, uh, something that would make you have to grow to become. A as a Catholic and as a Christian, I think that's right. We need, we, we have, God has a plan for our lives. We need to discover it, grow to become it, and in that we find meaning as we abandon. What really brings success is abandonment to God's will and purpose in our life and seek that and pursue it. So, Bill, after my dad was with SMI and he went on to become a public speaker and moved up to, the, to, the, to Minnesota, you uh, joined SMI, actually became president of SMI in Waco, Texas. Yeah, I was the, the franchisee uh, who later... Uh, became president of the company. I, I was in uh, a small town outside Philadelphia, uh, was one of the top franchises in the country. Maybe like your dad got invited to move to Waco, Texas, uh, was not my life dream for sure. Uh, but having the opportunity to be part of that great company uh, was too good to turn down. So uh, packed up and moved my wife and kids in 1990. And uh, seven years after that, uh, after moving up in the company, became president of SMI. Well, you must have known Chuck Williams. Uh, Ch in fact, I see Chuck from time to time. He still works. Well, you uh, have to give him a message. I need to be in touch with him again. He had a great impact on my life, Bill, because when I was a senior in high school, I think my dad must have known 
me and what, what my future, kind of the way I was wired. And he had Chuck come over and talk to me about becoming a CPA. And wow. of course, that's what I did. I did the big four CPA route. Now I have my own little boutique CPA firm, I call it. But Chuck Williams is the one that one hour conversation with him just set me on a path. What a, at a pivotal moment in my life. And of course, Jim Serbasky was such a motivator in my life too. Yes, uh, I, I miss Jim. Yeah, I miss him too. But Chuck Williams, when you see him, tell him how messed up I got. I became this uh, the CPA, and now I got a TV show. I don't know what I'm doing. Radio show too. If I know Chuck, he'll say he'll pray for you. Oh, yeah, Chuck. <laughs> I think I think the other thing about Chuck is I think he's the guy that smoked cigars and got me going on. I always admired that about him. So I I actually have a cigar line now, and he should buy. Uh, some of my Bears Man Cave cigars on my Deep Adventure website. But tell, tell, us, him to do it. tell us about, oh, uh, let's, let's backtrack now. Tell us about your personal journey of faith and, and how that kind of correlated with the, the, your, your SMI experience with the, the company Paul J. Myers founded. Well, they kind of run parallel uh, to each other. I, was, uh, I, I started my, uh, my um, work life out as a, a high school dropout. Uh, ended up uh, because somebody believed in me, helped me to go back to school and and uh, worked for 13 years, uh, going to uh, tr- trying to get the education that I missed. Uh, got to be a kind of a, a, a personal development junkie. F- found an SMI program, and let, then, as I said later, came into the came into the business. My faith journey. I married a a, a good Catholic girl uh, in 1978. In fact, yesterday was our 41st. Uh, anniversary. Uh, and uh, during that time, I, I was not a believer at all. I, I had a, it's a long story that we can share maybe in a minute. Uh, yeah, uh, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. Share that. Share that. And uh, when when I, I fell away from the church, I wasn't uh, involved in in the church at all till I was 10 years old. Uh, I had an alcoholic father, uh, kind of a, a, a rough upbringing. Uh, my, my home was a, a tough place to be, to be in. Uh, although I have lots of good memories as well. Uh, but when I was 10, I bumped into a, a young man uh, that, from my school who asked me if I was saved. Uh, I didn't know what that was. Uh, went home and asked my mom. Uh, and in fact, when he asked me if I, was, if I was saved, since I didn't know what that was, I did what most boys do when they, you put them on the spot. I beat them up. Uh, and uh, I had four, four brothers, and we, were fight, we fought all the time uh, and, and were in trouble all the time. When I asked my mom why we, what that meant to be saved, she explained the best she could, asked why we didn't go to church. And she said, uh, with your father's drinking and we never know what's going to be happening and me, uh, me working, I'm just too tired uh, to take you to church. So I, uh, with my grandmother as my sponsor, uh, got baptized in a Lutheran church along with my four brothers, one older and three younger at age 10. Uh, and I took the responsibility as head of our household at age 10. I took my four brothers. We went to the Lutheran church every week, went to Sunday school, went to conf- their confirmation, very similar to Catholic confirmation. In my confirmation year, had a great teacher, best teacher even up to this point in my life that I've ever had. He brought Jesus uh, alive in my life. And it was amazing. I stopped getting in trouble in school, started reading my Bible. I'm, I'm 13 years old. But in the middle of that year, uh, that teacher didn't come back for the second semester, uh, and I found out he didn't come back because he left his wife and his children and moved in with his 23-year-old secretary. Uh, so after that day, I decided uh, that was enough of church. If that's what it meant being a Christian, I didn't need that. Uh, and I kind of followed that path of self-sufficiency. Uh, what, did that- what, what, hold on, Bill. What a dramatic impact it has when a man of God falls, uh, uh, it, it, a, a father falls, um, the repercussions are eternal and they, they're like a tidal wave going out. It's not a small thing, man, if you're making a decision now, if you're making bad decisions, if you're living a dual life, the tragedy that you're going to bring into other people's lives. Stop what you're doing, get right with God, humble yourself, and, uh, and uh, get, get, get your head right and refocus because you're leading people uh, and you can break people's hearts and and really uh, derail them. Yeah, that and that theme of of uh, men not living their uh, their faith it kind of followed all the way through my life. In fact, uh, I met my wife. Uh, 
my now wife, uh, a good Catholic girl, as I said, and she uh, she knew that I wasn't a believer, that I wasn't interested in that. I just wanted to work hard, raise a good family, uh, have a better life for my family than I had growing up. Uh, and uh, But she said, I only have one condition. We're getting married in the Catholic Church. So I went through marriage prep, did all of those things. Uh, it got married in the in the Catholic Church, and I made a deal with her. I said, yes, we'll get married in the Catholic Church, but never again ask me to go to church with you. Uh, and uh, so she kept her end of the bargain. We had, had uh, a couple of kids. Uh, she went to Mass every week. She prayed every night uh, quietly for me but uh, and for our family. And she was the spiritual head of our household. Uh, ten, ten years later, and, and I, I would say— uh, bear that, well, that we we had a great life too at that let's time. Let's do this. Let's do the ten years later after this little break. Okay. We're talking good. with Bill Moyer. He's the founder of SOSLeadership.com, and we have a common background uh, with our our love for Paul Meyer, Paul J. Meyer, and um, Success Motivation Institute there in Waco, Texas, that you were at one time president of. We want to invite everybody, uh, you uh, you uh, men out there, to join Bear's Man Cave. It's a secret Facebook group that you can only join by going to the deepadventure.com website. And there we challenge men, equip men, we mobilize you. And we all, we all post, we all share our, our needs for prayer and encouragement with each other and inspire each other. And then every two or three weeks, we have a Bears Man Cave video chat meetup. And we, uh, and we uh, uh, get, to, get to look each other eyeball to eyeball and really encourage each other. So I encourage you guys, go to deepadventure.com and join up for Bears Man Cave. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. That's it. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN, and you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We want to invite you to go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. We have our radio show. is actually a YouTube TV show also. And so we, uh, you can go there and subscribe. And whenever we post a new show, we have radio shows up there. We have my Ocean Sunrise Morning Catechisms that I do every morning. We have uh, the Bear Wozniak Unchained series. We have, all, uh, we have our, our new thing, the, the Manliness channel a playlist that's up there too on on rules for manliness. We have so many great videos, even some surfing videos. So go to the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel and subscribe. It really helps us when you do that because when we reach a certain level, YouTube will help us to promote that channel and allow us, allow us uh, to do a lot more things. So please go to the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel and subscribe. Today we have a guest that kind of brings me back in time to my days when I was a surfer in Santa Cruz, California and got moved to uh, Central Texas, to Waco, Texas. Uh, where my dad uh, began working with a company called the SMI. And we have a uh, former president of SMI, not the founder, that was Paul Meyer, but the for- former president, uh, Bill Moyer, with us today. Bill, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Glad to be back. So you were sharing with us about your faith journey, how you had told your wife, I'll become a Catholic, but don't ever expect me to go into the church again. And so she yeah. kind of became the spiritual leader of the family. So then tell us what happened, what followed. Uh, 
if we fast forward 10 years of, of a good life together, uh, having children, uh, me changing careers, uh, became a, a, an LMI, a, a division of, of SMI and LMI franchise owner, uh, had one of the top franchises in the country at the height of my business career, the greatest year uh, of success, worldly success that I've ever had. Uh, I got invited to the world convention to receive an international award as one of the top people in the world. And uh, everything was good. I couldn't wait to go there. My wife, in fact, was pregnant with my son, Billy. So she couldn't join me uh, in Texas. It was in Austin, Texas. And I came from Philadelphia area. Uh, after receiving that award, something that I killed myself, I worked 18 hours a day, seven days a week uh, to, to build my business. Uh, after receiving that award, I looked at that trophy uh, and said, is this all there is? This is what I killed myself for. Uh, and uh, I, I heard other, pe other award winners talking about their faith, how their faith had sustained them. And I just was troubled that night. So instead of going to the reception, and by the way, at the reception, they had the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders there. All the award winners got invited to that. I couldn't even make myself go to that. So I went outside, took a walk to clear my head. And it's middle of the night. It's after midnight uh, along Town Lake in, in Austin, now Lady Bird uh, Lake. Mm -hmm. And in taking a walk, I encountered a homeless man who was following me. Uh, and in fact, I stopped him because I thought that he was there. Uh, I was a little nervous. I thought he was there to rob me. Uh, and uh, so I stopped, had an encounter with him. I think I scared him to death when I turned and confronted him. And he said to me, you look kind of lonely. You look like you need someone to talk to. Why don't we have a cup of coffee and just talk? So, but he didn't have any money. He asked if I had money for him to get coffee. I thought, but that's probably what he really wanted all along. So I gave him the $2. My mom always raised me to, to make sure you have $2 in your pocket. I didn't even have my ID with me. Uh, gave him the $2 and was walking as fast as I could back to the Hyatt Regency Hotel where my conference was, thinking I was lucky to get out alive. And uh, next thing you know, he's running behind me with two cups of coffee out of breath. And, and we sat down right outside that hotel uh, along the area where the pool is and talked all through the night. He told me about his life living on the street, how he had lost his job and uh, started drinking. His wife left him and he had been for the last three years, hadn't seen his family and his life just had spiraled downward. I told him about my relationship with my alcoholic father and how men had always let me down and had hurt me. And I told him about my teacher uh, disappointing me and why I left the church. Uh, and I said, but I'm really troubled tonight because I have everything I ever wanted in my life. I have a great wife, uh, great kids, a career, all kinds of amazing things. But I just can't understand why enough is never enough. And he looked me in the eye and he said, uh, you're never going to be happy again and feel contentment until you go home again. You've not been happy since you left home. And I said, so let me see if I understand what you're saying. A homeless man is telling me that I need to go home. Uh, I am going to go home tomorrow morning. I'm going back to my family he said, no, home means back with that relationship you had with Jesus Christ. That's what's been missing in your life. And when I looked back over into his face, I no longer saw him. I saw the face of Jesus Christ. And uh, so I said to him, when I go home to my family, I'll go home to the church if you promise me you'll go home to your family. And he said, my wife, uh, I don't think they'd even let me come into the home. And I said, uh, are they nearby? And he said, yeah, they're in Austin. Uh, and I said, I just won an award for being one of the best salespeople in the world. Let me call him and ask him. Uh, and I called his wife that, uh, that night. It was about five in the morning. About an hour later, his wife came and picked him up and took him home. Uh, when he waved goodbye to me, he mouthed uh, through the window, thank you. Uh, but when he, the face that looked back at me was not uh, the face of Jesus Christ anymore. It was the face of my alcoholic father. And I knew in that moment uh, that, that that meant big changes 
were in store for me in my life. For, uh, it was a an epiphany almost, uh, understanding that my dad was struggling just like this man was his whole life. I so see. I went. You I understood went, your father more and the struggles that he was going yeah, through. Yeah, okay. both of those came together. Mm. So I called my wife. Uh, sometimes when you get the Holy Spirit, you think you get smarter, but we're men, so we never get much smarter. I called my pregnant wife uh, in the morning uh, before I left to go to the airport, and she said, oh, honey, how was the, the reception? How was the award ceremony? And I said, I didn't go last night. I, I, went, out, uh, I went out for the night, and I met someone. And when I get home, we're going to make some changes. But I'll tell you about that when I get there. <laughs> My poor pregnant wife thought that I was coming home to leave her, that I met somebody else. Uh, and I had no idea till I got home and saw the look in her eyes. Uh, so as I said, sometimes oh, the Holy Spirit. You are still, like a, you are a knuckle dragger, dude. Well, I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, we oh, do oh, have oh. those things in common. For sure. Oh, gosh. Poor woman. What's her name again? Her name is Rose. Oh, my gosh. We're sorry, Rose. That's what you got to put up with when you fall in love with a with a guy with a man, I guess. So, so then you got home, and what did you what happened? Uh, I got home. I, I shared what happened. Uh, we uh, we we made a few calls to find uh, a, a parish that had RCIA, a Catholic I, church. I, okay. I, yep, I enrolled in. And in what RCIA. and what is what is RCIA? It, it's the rite of Christian initiation for adults. Uh, in fact, today I'm the director of RCIA for my my parish here in Wake. Praise in Waco. God, Bill. I mean, what you're doing, you're just doing so much. You know, my wife, her, her she's a convert, and her experience of that eight to nine month or almost more course, she says is the greatest thing that ever happened to her going to through the RCIA. Yeah, and then so the I, next day we got married. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that that was the second best thing. Maybe I don't know. Well, yeah, they're they're pretty similar. Uh, one without the other is incomplete. Uh, Amen. sometimes I think Amen. for us, I think we yeah. need both. Uh, and that's what I realized, uh, there when I, when I came into the church and received, uh, the, the precious body of, uh, and blood of Christ for the first time, uh, I knew with my wife standing right there next to me, that was the first time in my life that I knew what real intimacy was. Uh, I thought I understood that. I thought, uh, that, that, that uh, to becoming one in a marriage. I thought I knew what that was, but we became one. And that was 10 years after we were married that from that day on, uh, I feel that oneness with her, but, but I didn't know that was missing because we, you don't know what's missing until you have it. It's so true, isn't it? I mean, when I, when I had my encounter with the Lord, when I was 19, I figured everybody, if they just knew they could know the creator of the universe and have this personal relationship with him, that they'd be like, yeah, I want that. But you don't know what you're missing until you, until you don't know what you don't know. In other words, and so if you're listening to Bill right now, uh, especially you men out there, uh, open up your hearts to the reality that uh, God made you with a purpose, and He wants you to be happy. He doesn't want you to be unhappy. If you're not happy right now, it may be because you're not walking, you, you know, the right the, the path that He has for you. Being a Christian, abandoning yourself to God's will doesn't mean you have to be, become someone you're not. You actually become a lot more of who you are, and you like yourself and enjoy your life a lot more. But there's an old story, Bill. Maybe you know this story of the man petting the cat, and the cat is just bristling, and his, 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 you know how they arch their back? He's just hairs on end, and the cat just hates it. And then you hear the man saying to the cat, well, he, you know what he's doing is he's petting him against the grain. Yeah. And you hear the man say to the cat, turn around, cat, turn around. So it's not like he's petting him wrong. The cat's fa the cat is facing the wrong mm. direction, and sometimes we men we just get stuck in our ways and we're not going to turn around. But but turn around, and uh, and and look in Christ's eyes and just say yes, Lord. If you're there, if you're real, if you're what these men are saying you are, then I want all of you that I can get. It's like dropping into a big wave, and my son towed into 85 foot surf on the north shore of Oahu in 2007, and when he dropped into that wave, it was full commitment. So you're a man, you want to be a hero, you want to take on a challenge bigger than you can handle by yourself, so why not take on the, the, the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate rush you can have is abandoning yourself to God's will. The ultimate rush uh, is the ultimate rush because Jesus paid the ultimate price for you. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our guest today is Bill Moyer of SOSleadership.com. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. 
go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. <clears throat> Our guest today is Bill Moyer. He is the CEO and co-founder of SOSLeadership.com. One of the things I like about him is he works with his son, Billy. Uh, they work together, and I have the unique privilege of getting to do that with two of my sons who uh, help do the show and help... Uh, they own the production company that does our TV show too. But I remember, Bill, um, you were talking about how when you won this great pot prize, it kind of left you sort of empty. I remember winning uh, the, my first world title that I won. I remember uh, it's so cool, man. I'm on the beach and I'd worked so hard and trained so hard. It's like going to war, you know. Uh, surf contests are not the same as just going out and surfing. And I had won the world title and pretty soon everybody was gone, right? Like you described, kind of like, it's definitely the feeling is that all there is. Um, I had a good friend of mine, Pohaku Stone, happened to be there, and he said I got, he pulled, he could see me because the, 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 they were taking down the, the stands and everything for the contest, and, and he said, I got something for you, and he reached into his glove compartment of his pickup truck, and he said, and he had a, a, a beautiful Monte Cristo cigar, I believe it was, and I said, someone left me a bottle of really good wine they wanted me to give to you if I ever saw you, well, next time I saw you, and I rented my, condo a block or two away and brought that out and we had a wine from a paper cup and had a couple cigars together and I just kind of sat with him but I did have that feeling and at that time I, I wasn't married I was a Christian but I just kind of lost my way it was just before I returned to the Catholic Church but I remember I felt like I'm a Christian but I'm, I'm swimming in the shallow end of the pool I, I, I want more I want I want more depth I'd found the Lord in the Catholic Church but I had been under catechized and I couldn't find more of what I wanted, so I, I followed the people that I knew who knew the Lord best, like you did with the, the Lutheran, I guess, pastor. And, uh, and so, but when I went there, I, I learned a lot, but eventually I was just saying, is that all there is to that, too? And yeah. it was kind of adrift. And then I found my father, who's a deacon in the Catholic Church, sent me uh, uh, Stephen Ray's book, Crossing the Tiber. And when I found the early church fathers, I go, that's it. So accomplishing stuff that... It, it's it, it the, this success motivation institute that you worked with it's it's a progressive realization of a worthwhile personal goal my dad used to add the word meaningful personal goal uh how do we find meaning so you you were you you, be, you became a catholic uh did the rcia thing and then how did what what does it mean what does it mean that the, the pursuit of a meaningful uh direction for our lives how does what is how do how do you find meaning in your life Okay. All these men you're talking to, Bill, they're successful like you. Yeah. But they don't have meaning. Well, what, how do we find meaning in our lives? Well, in, in fact, uh, my son and I uh, wrote a book together uh, about that called Seeds of Success, The Journey from Success to Significance. And that's uh, uh, significance is success that matters. It's that meaningful uh, goal. Uh, and so we took uh, the Paul's definition of success, progressive Paul, realization. Paul, Paul Meyer, not Saint Paul Meyer, Paul. right? Yeah, Paul Meyer. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, although there were times, knowing him over the years, he thought he was a saint, uh, <laughs> and sometimes not. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, but anyway, yeah. he, uh, we, but but we we took that that definition and said it's the progressive realization of God's pre uh, realization of God's predetermined personal plan for your life. I love it. Uh, I love it, that. And that's what that that's what man's search for meaning is. We're looking for meaning and purpose, but God really does have a plan for our life. Uh, but we choose which path, whether we're going to do it our way, uh, or 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 walk towards that light. And I think my experience through RCIA came from that. But sometimes, uh, bear sometimes there's some baggage that we have a, a, along the the way, and some things we need to let go of. So my great experience at the end of my RCIA. Uh, a deacon who was uh, in my small group at the last retreat said to me just before Holy Saturday, 1988, uh, when I was coming into the church, said, I don't think you're ready to come into the church yet. Uh, and I said, what do you mean? I have I, I could answer every question. If you give me a test, I'll get 100. I'm, I'm so on fire. And he said, how can you say yes to God 
And he called confirmation. I still call it that. He called it the big amen. Uh, when you say yes, you can't erase it. It means yes, I believe. But how can you say yes to the Father and carry all the bitterness in your heart uh, for your own father uh, it, where you don't want to have anything to do with him? You've not forgiven him for any of that. So uh, we won't deny you the sacrament, but I want you to pray about that over the next week and, and just listen and hear what God's calling you to do. So I went home that day and talked to my wife. Uh, we prayed together. First, I had to tell my wife what it was like for me growing up. She just thought I didn't get along with my dad. She had no idea uh, what I experienced. It was, uh, it could be a whole other show, uh, but it was really difficult. But I got the courage after praying together called my dad and said I wanted to come see him. And I sat down uh, across from him and looked him in the eye uh, and told him that I loved him and that I forgave him. And my big, strong uh, father, he was a fighter, uh, cried like a baby. And after that day, until he died 12 years later, my dad never drank again. A lifetime alcoholic, a fourth generation alcoholic, never never drank again. He became the grandfather that my kids deserved. They, they remember my dad uh, as this kind man who wrote love letters to them. Uh, he took care of my mom when she was dying uh, and sat by her bed and cared for her when she was in a coma and was dying. Amazing transformation that happened from that forgiveness. So without that, when I said yes, my big amen, uh, I said that freed from that. So so I challenge men a, a lot. We carry a lot of that. We have a lot of father wounds and a lot of other things that we deal with. And they get in the way and they make us travel more that path of self-sufficiency rather than trusting God. Uh, and sometimes our, our relationship with God the Father and our relationship with our own Father get kind of mixed together, and, and they affect that, that image that we have of God. And that was, that was uh, just part of my story and part of uh, me then understanding what success really meant. It made me be uh, want to be the kind of man that my wife deserves uh, for a husband, the kind of father that my children deserve, but to be the kind of man— that God already saw me as, uh, and, and all I had to do was just like that cat. I just had to do a U Y O U turn, uh, yeah, that's and walk awesome. to him. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the, the power of forgiveness. Oh, amazing. I've done some stupid things and I just love it when someone actually forgives me, you know, um, that real wholehearted, uh, uh, the sort of forgiveness that, that you don't really deserve, you know, but, but yeah. God forgives you. And I think also one of the things that we forget to do is to seek forgiveness, is to say to someone, when I did this, I wronged you in this way, and then say these words, will you forgive me? You don't say, when I did this, I, 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 I might have offended you when I did this. It's not about them. It's about what you did. When you say to someone, when I did this, I'm sorry if I offended you. All you're doing then is saying they've got a problem being easily offended. But to say, when I spoke in this way to you, I demeaned you as a human being, and, I, and I'm greatly sorry, and I need to ask you, will you forgive me? And then you shut up. And, 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 and I'm sorry, what were you going to say, Bill? <laughs> When I hear I'm sorry, that an old movie years ago, and not, not everyone will. Oh, I uh, know what you're going to talk about. Uh, love story. Uh, your love story, exactly. <laughs> uh, when they, the worst advice ever given. I agree. Uh, Horrible love advice. Means never having to say you're sorry. Real love means uh, knowing when you've hurt someone and having that wisdom and having the courage uh, and, and, and the real love to say you're sorry. Uh, and for men, we really have a hard time with, with that. We have a hard time with I'm sorry. We have a hard time with I love you uh, and, and words like that because they don't seem like very manly terms. Mm -hmm. uh, but our model is Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ was a man's man. Uh, so when I look at that as, as a model of love uh, and, and forgiveness and standing up for what you believe in and being able to express uh, your feelings to someone else. That's the model that we should have, not to, uh, they know I love you, you know I love you because I married you and, and all of those, but also 
being able to say I'm sorry, and then to ask for forgiveness, but also to forgive. So we have to ask for forgiveness, but we also have to give it. I think uh, seeking forgiveness is a great place to learn to give forgiveness. You know, yes. It's, it's having a clear conscience. St. Paul talked about that. The definition of a clear conscience is to know that there's no one that you have wronged that you haven't tried to make right and seek forgiveness for. Yes. You know, so they don't have to forgive you for you to have a clear conscience. It's your effort at seeking reconciliation genuinely and humbling yourself and saying those words, those beautiful words, will you forgive me? I know in my own life, uh, you know, there are often times that my father was pretty tough on me, and I just never heard those words from him. It would have meant so much to me if he would have just said, I was wrong, will you forgive me? And maybe the men that are listening to this right now know that they need to kind of heal that father wound. One of the challenges I think we have, especially a man like you and me, we have held ourselves to real high expectations in our lives for excellence in business and in hopefully in virtue. And then we lay that same trip on other people that they're not quite ready for. It's like David putting on Saul's armor. He just wasn't ready for it yet. And so we need to, uh, one of the reasons why I think I, 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 where I fail is expecting more out of someone than they're ready for right at that time and just kind of uh, see that and recognize that that's my issues and, and to learn to seek forgiveness. So men, if you've wronged someone, don't wait. Go and seek uh, forgiveness, especially you fathers. It might be a, a season in your life when you need to seek the forgiveness of your children one at a time, individually, in a very sacred moment, very prayerful moment. But we'll get back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure after this message. Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I feel like the Holy Spirit just entered the, entered the room. You know, like there's a great healing that Bill's talking about with the need for <clears throat> fathers especially to seek forgiveness from their children. You know, Bill uh, Moyer, CEO of SOSleadership.com, he and his son, Billy, uh, work in this, this, this arena together. You know, I was thinking there's two places in Scripture that I know of where the word success shows up. One of them is in Psalm 1 where it says, don't sit around the place of scoffers. You know, don't go down to the local pub, but meditate on God's Word day and night, and success will attend what you do. And I believe the other one was in Joshua, where Moses told Joshua, meditate on God's Word and success will attend all that you do. Um, there is this rhythm to our lives of meditating on God's Word. Can I ask you, what is the rhythm of your week, the rhythm of your day in your, in your daily prayer and, medi- and, 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 and reading? How do you fit that into this incredibly busy life that you have? I, I, I use a, a simple philosophy. I actually teach it even in, in business. Uh, uh, you've heard it before about first things first, that you do what's most important first in a day. So I begin my morning early, five, around 5 a.m., and that's my morning prayer time. I, I, I begin it with scripture, uh, read, do the readings of the day and reflection, uh, uh, some, sometimes, not, not every day, but most well, the days. Reading, what do you mean by the readings of the day for a non-Catholic audience? For, from the, the lectionary, the, the, uh, the Catholic Church, you can go through the entire Bible uh, it, it, just by going through the readings of the day. So I use a, I actually take it from a book called Living with Christ. Sometimes I'll use Magnificat, uh, and there'll be a uh, a, a reading and a gospel reading, uh, and then uh, also a psalm. Uh, so I'll read that every day. Sunday we have a, a second reading as well, uh, and I'll read and reflect on that. 
sometimes a little Lectio Divina, putting myself into Scripture. Meditating. Uh, That's the meditating on God's Word, right. The the meditating on God's Word. What is Lectio Divina, Bill? It, it, it really is. Lectio Divina is is uh, it, it's praying with. It's really praying with Scripture and reflecting uh, on the, on the Scripture. So at some level, at its deepest level, you're putting yourself really there at that scene uh, and just experiencing it. And you're not reading a long uh, passage, maybe just one line, uh, and and just a much deeper reflection. So, what would you say is that? What would you say is the last time uh, when you were meditating that? A, 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 one of a, a scripture kind of popped off the page. What was it? And what was God telling you? Um, I've been uh, studying uh, and, and really reflecting in Ecclesiastes. Uh, that really speaks to me. Uh, in fact, you're, men- you're a strange guy, dude. You're one it's, strange cat. Uh, but but as I've been doing that, it, almost everything that I thought was important in life as I reflect on it. It's, it's had me really reflect back on my life. I guess that's what 40 years of marriage and your ninth grandchild on the way. Uh, it really gets you to look back. You mean I, where it I, says vanity of vanities, all is vanity. vanity. And, and almost everything is vanity. And, and uh, when, when I look at it, uh, we're, we're out searching for something in our life that's missing and we have it right there, freely given, right in front of us all the time. And, and I believe that, and, and I've learned that. But sometimes I go back, and even the little things that I want to do, uh, I, I use that as the filter when I'm praying about what to do next. When, when my parish asked if I'd become the director of RCIA, I, I've taught confirmation for 29 years. And uh, so they asked if I would... I asked, do you want me to graduate up now to adults uh, to be the director? I, I uh, do some teaching in RCA, but they asked me to actually run that program. So I prayed uh, b- by looking at Vanity of Vanities and said, uh, is, is that what I'm called to do? But also, is that vanity? Is, is that me wanting to do that because I like right. my name in the yes, book? Yes, right. And, and all of that. Uh, and, and I have also this other great gift uh, called my wife who reminds me when vanity comes into my life. Uh, and, uh, and sometimes she'll ask, is that something well, you need to do for you, uh, or is that something God's calling you to do? No, I know for me, I, my, the vanity comes in when God calls me to do something, then I kind of take it over. And I think it's up to me. And, uh, it, and, yeah. it's, and, and the, it's like a surfer. We drop in on a big wave. If you drop in on a real, like a 24-foot wave or something, and you do that bottom turn, and you fire down the face of the wave because you want to, accelerate as that wave starts peeling along so you don't get gobbled up. But what happens, you outrun the wave, and then you lose all the power. And then yes. you have to cut back into the vortex of the power. And that's, that's, that, that's why the, the first wor- the putting first things first, praying. You know, men want to be productive, but the word, like I, I follow the liturgy of the hours, that prayer cycle of yes. the church. And liturgy means work of the people, your most important work. Is that? But I, I, a young man asked me at the at the Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance um, a couple weeks ago in Dallas. I'm so concerned that what God's calling me to do might be. How do I separate the pride from the from from all of this? And I tell you know what it's like having a salt and pepper shaker and you mix them together. You got salt and pepper. The salt is good. The pepper is your own vanity. I just said you, you, the very fact that you think you can clear clear up all that vanity is vain. It's is your own vanity itself. It's pride itself. Just say, Lord, you know, uh, you know, I have an issue with vanity. Will you take care of this for me? In other words, your very effort to try to fix it is just another act of vanity on yourself. Just say the just just have a talk with God and say, you got to help me fix this. Well, I. I just got back uh, a few weeks ago from uh, my third year of going and, and speaking all across Poland to men's groups. In, in, uh, I want to go with you. How cool uh, is that? How do, you get to, how do you get to be that guy? I, I'm connected awesome. to the, to the uh, person who would be like the head of that CMLA that you were just at in Dallas yeah. in Poland. Uh, and uh, so wow. I've won three years in a row, spoken seven different cities. Now this year, seven different again, so 21 total different cities. Praise God. Uh, and then I also really? do a, uh, a, the summit like you were just at. I missed that, by the way, for being, I was at a family reunion. Uh, I spoke at that, that conference you were at last year. But uh, in, in Poland, I, I lead that, com- that conference uh, for the last three years where their leaders come from all across the country. Praise but God. But th- this year, the talks that I did as I traveled city to city 
was called the great man's greatest sin, and all the men thought it was about sex. Uh, and uh, but man's greatest sin was called is the sin of the ego uh, and its pride. Uh, so uh, my whole focus has been on that. That's really what I've been in, in my work with men. Uh, traveling in the U.S. and speaking, wh- what I've been writing about and journaling about, I've really been focusing a lot on on uh, on those issues, on on pride, which is w- where Ecclesiastes comes from. That's that is a strange. If uh, God's got you living in Ecclesiastes, man, that's 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 a, that's a tough road there. Well, when I, when you start uh, looking in, in the Bible and see what the Bible says about about pride, it takes you there first. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, so so that was I, I felt convicted sometimes reading reading yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh that's, yes, that's good. But not condemned. Can you explain the difference between feeling convicted or con- versus feeling condemned? Yeah, uh, none of us want to be condemned because condemned is a is a, a death sentence, and that means we're separated from God for all of eternity. Convicted is a wake up call. It means we we have some things we have to work through, uh, and, and we have to serve out our sentence, which sometimes has some a punishment phase. It may it may have some work and effort, like me forgiving my dad, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, some effort in my marriage uh, when I came in. Uh, to the church because I thought I had a good marriage, but didn't realize that I was not fulfilling my marriage vow. My marriage promised to be the spiritual head of my household. So I had some work I had to do uh, in that. So I was convicted in that way and had to to serve that out and work through uh, all of those things to make me pure of heart uh, so that I could go and spend the rest of eternity. Uh, When that day comes, uh, I'm not quite ready yet, uh, uh, b- because I think my, right now I might have a long stay in purgatory, uh, but but I, I do look forward to that to that day when when I get to see that light uh, and, and get to be there face to face. But for now, in the meantime, I want to go out and and uh, wake up every day and say good morning, Lord, uh, and then spend all day every day somehow trying to be a living witness uh, uh, for others. So that not, they, not, not a living uh, theologian, a living witness, someone who wit- says, I've been with Jesus. We're talking with Bill Moyer, success, uh, SOS leadership.com. You know, uh, that, that day to day experience of, of being with the Lord, that, that walk with the Lord, uh, you mentioned purgatory, how Jesus said, uh, only the pure of heart can see God as, as he really is. Um, you know, everyone's going to see God face to face, and I'm challenging the men out there right now, especially. Are you ready to meet your Maker? Because some of you are going to die today. I have, there's a, well over maybe close to two million people listening. Some of you are you going to die today? You're actually going to die today. This might be the hour, even. Some of you maybe know it's coming. Some of it it might come for you unexpectedly. Are you ready to see God? Uh, you will see God, but only those who are pure of heart will see Him as He really is. But it's appointed on a man wants to live, then, then to die, and then the judgment. And then there's heaven and hell. A purgatory is actually a part of heaven. It's our last point of purification where the Lord purges us of our selfishness and our own agendas so that we can more and more clearly see God. And so I just want to invite you, man, if you haven't given your life to Jesus, you can pull over off the curb right now in your car and you can say, Jesus, uh, I, I give up. You've been chasing me. I've been running. Uh, I, I ask you to forgive me for all that I have done, all my selfishness, and ask you to be my Lord, to be my Savior. And then I encourage you, men, to go, or women too, but to go to, your, go to a priest and begin to say, how do I start my journey towards intimacy with God? Receive the sacraments of, of, of baptism if you haven't ever even been to a church or the sacrament of reconciliation and begin your homeward uh, journey so that when you do see God face to face, you will see him as he really is with the purity of heart that only Christ can bring to your life. Bill, where can they find you again? What's your website? It's sosleadership.com, and you'll see all kinds of information about the business work that we do. We do goal-setting, leadership development. We have a lot of Catholic parishes that are clients of ours. I work with mostly Catholic-owned or Catholic-run businesses, but I'll take anyone. Uh, so, so, so SOSleadership.com and uh, Billy there works with you. I hope Billy and I can get an interview in soon. We're already way over our time limit, Bill, so we got to go. So everyone, until next week, uh, don't forget to go to our deepadventure.com website. We have so much there, it's almost impossible to work your way through all the way have for you at our website. 
Till next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Ah. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.